No? Okay. So the next check is checking for empty paragraphs. Um, and empty paragraphs uh, can be found in one of two ways. You can actually do a search, um, you know, go through the document and, you know, look at it and see if you see a line that looks like this. You know, that's an empty paragraph. Correct, right? So as Richard pointed out, by deleting all uh, comments, um, you risk deleting stuff. So that actually brings up a good point. We try to avoid unless we are absolutely 100% sure um, doing things in a sort of global way, especially when it means removing content or removing comments or anything like that. Um, it's often better to go one by one um, and make sure that you're retaining things um, that need to be retained. Um, although the option is there if you are 100% certain that all your comments were maybe even added uh, by somebody on your team and they told you, it's like, oh, I added those comments, but I already handled them. Something like that. Um, so in this case, um, we're searching for empty paragraphs and these are just empty paragraph lines. There shouldn't be any um, in this because remember that our, um, uh, that's likely Sophie because you don't actually have a comment um, on um, in your file. If you were to have a comment, then um, you would be able to delete it. But without it there, then we're just sort of graze it out so that you don't even have to worry about it. Um, so actually a, a quick way to do that check is to look at that and if everything's grayed out, you know, you don't have any comments and so you don't have to worry about that and you can mark that as complete. And so if you, at this uh, stage, at this uh, next step, uh, we're searching for those empty paragraphs. Um, again, there shouldn't be any because our styles uh, handle the spacing, right? Oftentimes authors will insert like hard returns in order to indicate the spacing that they want, uh, but our first, our last, our, you know, standalones, those styles already handle that spacing. So you do not need to have blank lines um, in your document, right? And so, in fact, we actually get rid of them while we are composing after we've applied, you know, the, um, the proper uh, styles. So in this case, um, you can do that and you can go through and go through the document and actually do it by eye or um, you can do a search um, in Word. I know that this works on Word on Windows. I'm pretty sure it works on Mac, um, but I haven't had the chance to experience this. But if you search for caret P, that is uh, Word's um, wildcard or regular expression for, um, for this, um, uh, for the hard return character. And if you search for two of them in a row, you'll often find um, your blank lines easier that way. Um, so here, we already see that we found one here, the one that I inserted. So if we find any of them, all we have to do is make sure that things are composed properly. So go into draft view. I know that this is composed and I can just get rid of the blank. Right. Carrot 13 on a Mac. And I believe Carrot 13 also works on, um, on PC. So Carrot 13 all around. Um, and so, um, We've gone ahead and checked for our empty lines. We know that we don't have any here. So we're looking through just to be sure. And it seems like everything's okay. So again, these checks are not like be all end alls. Um, and there's another thing about QC that uh, we should know. Uh, remember that it's another human being that's also doing um, you know, the uh, quality control. Um, so they might miss something. Um, and that is okay, you know, because at, at this point, what you always, should always tell somebody, especially somebody who's composing the file, is that they are going to get this feedback. They're going to look at the file again, and if they spot anything else, well, then it's good to, um, to get that fix at that point in time as well. So um, the reason I say that is because um, a lot of the checks rely upon not only your knowledge, uh, but also the time that you take with um, the, the file and also... Um, just um, your human eye. So uh, we're looking here and we say, okay, we have no empty paragraph, empty paragraph lines, so we can go back to our QC checklist and mark that as complete. Now, the next one, um, it depends on uh, what style uh, you're using. We use um, title case for all our heads because 
our sort of default is Chicago Manual of Style. Um, but if, for example, your book, the heads need to be a sentence case, um, then that's perfectly fine. You can actually just go and sort of modify this search and say, or this, um, this item and say, okay, are all my heads sentence case, right? So what, essentially what this um, is searching for is consistency. So we're gonna go through I don't believe this will be a, a good example, but um, if you bring up this navigation bar, after you've composed um, your file, uh, the heads and the titles and all those should appear here um, because we actually, um, so the, um, Tim, if you could um, illuminate things and say, um, does that navigation bar come up on uh, Mac? same way or is it slightly different? So I get that navigation panel um, on a Mac if I go to um, review and there's a review pane, yours mm -hmm. it comes up with your find tool, mm -hmm. yeah. and, which is not the case on a Mac. Right. Okay. In, uh, at least in 2011, I don't know about 2016, um, the find is just like a little window, a little not bar. like a built-in bar where you get all the results there. Right. Correct. Okay. So uh, one other then, quick thing about the title case thing, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, Elvis, mm -hmm. just to see what your, your feeling is on this. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say someone is composing and they're not comfortable with, you know, making these editorial changes. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't know what the editor is going to use. It's mm -hmm. something that they could maybe note that they didn't check for and could say like, hey, this is something for editorial to review. Right. Because right. you, you may have someone composing who's not an editor or right. doesn't know, or maybe you're not sure what you're going to edit with before you start right. your project. Right. And as Tim said, it, they, they might be um, uncomfortable just going ahead and like making things title case. Um, just as a reminder, the SAI does have the option to make things uh, title case and it follows CMS. But again, if you want, if the composer, the person who's composing wants to leave that to the editorial person. They should note that to the person who's going to QC it um, so that they know to even just skip over that um, check. So again, you can skip over certain checks, especially if you've already had a conversation with the person who was working on this and they told you, hey, I didn't touch the heads because I didn't know what was going on with that. Um, the editor will handle that. I've already cleared that. Then you're good and you don't actually have to perform that check. So, uh, so to avoid the issue of the navigation pane, especially since uh, I know some of our users are on Mac, um, the other way to search for this, right, is to actually just go through the document and look at the heads and make sure that they are title case or sentence case or whatever case it needs to be, right? So in our case, they are. Thankfully, this is a small uh, document, but if you have a larger document, you can pretty much just sort of glance at the heads. Um, it's the reason why we render um, the heads in Word the way that we do so that we can, just by their size, you can tell that something, um, that that's like a head and it's something that you need to check. So here, everything is title case. Right. And so, by the way, the way I got right up to the top, um, if we can also uh, just hit Control Home, right? Uh, so Control Home or I'm assuming command home on a Mac, um, will take you to the top of the document. So we'll go back to our QC checklist and mark that as checked. And now we're looking at structure indicators. We haven't gotten to the regular text checks yet. That actually occurs at the end. Uh, right now we're still working in Word and looking, um, looking at the um, file in Word. So we're looking at our structure indicators and we're saying, okay, our chapter structure indicators use for the sections in the front matter, right? In the table, um, before the table of content. Uh, remember when we were composing uh, and we were explaining why we use structure indicators, um, remember that those actually just divide uh, sections that are not uh, labeled with CN, CT, PT, UT, or any of those uh, title um, st um, styles or subtitle styles or chapter number and so on and so forth. And it allows us to treat each, um, each section as its own individual section, right? And that often happens in the front matter because in the front matter, you don't have any of those titles um, and you'll just have the half title page, the title page, the, you know, the copyright page, the dedication and so on and so forth, sort of all blending together, um, but they are not the same. Um, 
you know, section. They are divided and they each start on a new page um, in a printed book. Um, so in this instance, we're going to go ahead and check our front matter. We're going to go back to our word file. And this is just another visual check. You look and you make sure that everything that needs to have a structure, um, a structure indicator um, will have it. So you just search for that beginning, beginning and end, beginning and end for this section and beginning and end through here. If for example, we're looking at it and we know that our, that we have a beginning and end for everything and then our, all of a sudden our copyright page does not have the structure tag, then we can go ahead and either add it in if this isn't going to go back to the uh, person composing if you're just like rushing this along. Um, but what we recommend is to actually note that and send that as a note to the person composing it and sending them the file so that they can um, see their um, the mistake and see where it needs to be fixed. So I'll go ahead and just undo that. And we've gone through our front matter. 